Perfumery is known as one of the most difficult art forms to get into, not only because of its relatively high cost, but also because of the lack of information, be it online or in books, about the subject and how do you get started. Now, this is understandable as throughout history, most of that information has been developed inside some of the major fragrance companies. And of course, it's understandable that they would not want to share all of their secrets as such because it would give all their competitors an advantage and at the end of the day they're trying to make a product so it makes sense however worry not because now with the advent of the internet there are more resources than ever before about perfumery online which makes it easier than ever to start picking up at home so in this video i'm going to bring you guys the list of all of the best websites that i found for perfumery online and i'm going to share them with you so hopefully you can find some use in these hopefully they'll contribute to your better development as a perfumer. That said, I'm sure there are lots of websites that I don't know about or I've missed off. So if you know about some of those websites, please leave them in the comments so everyone else who's watching this video can also check those out too. So let's get into it. Um, yeah, the first website I was gonna show you guys is Fragrantica. Now this is effectively a Wikipedia kind of of perfumes. Now, if there is a certain perfume you like, you can um, go on it. So I don't know what this one is, um, but the point is you can, you can go on a perfume and you can go down here and you can actually see the notes of the perfume uh, if this loads properly. So this one has, for example, apparently got bergamot pepper in the top notes and in the mid notes, apparently it's got some patchouli, vetiver, pink pepper, um, cedarwood in the base notes, etc. Um, now, these are not necessarily always completely accurate, but they can definitely point you in the right direction, especially if there's a perfume you know you want to make something that smells a bit similar to, then you can use this as like a kind of starting point for what kind of materials you might want to be blending together. Um, and another thing is if you actually go on the perfumer themselves, um, often you can find other perfumes that they made. So that can be quite an interesting feature as well. Um, next we have base notes. Now this one is probably the largest forum as such for perfumery. Now they have some things like articles on the website as well, which I haven't really read though. They are probably great. Um, I don't know. But if you go to their forums, you can find the fragrance DIY section. Now this is full of people who are asking and answering questions about perfumery. So if you have something that you're confused with, um, this is a really good place to go and look if anyone's already answered that or otherwise you can go and ask a question and often there are loads of lovely people who are willing to respond. Um, and yeah, another good thing you can do is say there's an accord you want to make. So say you want to make a Jasmine accord, for example, you can go and search this in the, in the search function and there's often lots of forum threads about people who've already done this kind of thing. So I don't know, um, I haven't looked at these really, but for example, okay, there's this guy who's made a trial like Jasmine Accord. Um, and then often you have other people giving their opinions or other alternative accords that they might suggest. Um, so if you're, if you're kind of stuck on making an accord and you wanna know what you can do, then I would definitely recommend like checking that out. So that's a uh, base notes DIY section. Um, next, you've got the other main kind of website that people seem to use, which is Good Sense Company. Now, this one is effectively like a Wikipedia or a directory of ingredients for fragrance. So say you're interested in something particular, so like Cephalus, which is an aroma chemical. Um, say you haven't bought it yet, for example, this website can be super interesting. So you go onto it. And what you'll find is you've got things like the picture of the molecule and the identifiers, the chemical identifiers, um, but you've also got different um, evaluations and things like that. Now this one's got a reference, which is great. So, you know, obviously it says woody, old, amber, tobacco, hot herbal. Well, that's uh, this guy's interpretation of it, right? Um, and you've got some information about how long it will last. Um, so that will help you decide, okay, is it most likely gonna be a base note, a mid note, or a top note, that kind of thing. Um, it's not always accurate, but it can give you a good idea. And then you've got descriptions from the manufacturers as well, um, and the resellers, so someone like Chivodon. Uh, this is a manufacturer. You'll probably not buy from them directly because the minimum order is really high, but they will sell on to people like Perfumers Welding, Pell Well, who you can then go and buy off. 
um, and these are the descriptions. So basically, if you don't know really what you want, this is a good way you can kind of check out what things might smell like. Um, other things on here like some safety information and there's some kind of what might blend well with it that kind of thing so this website can be useful um i don't really use it so much but i know a lot of people use it all the time so i think it's definitely if you don't know about this then it's a really good reference and you'll probably use it at least every now and again you know okay then so next we have the formulas now there aren't that many websites where people are giving all their formulas away for free but i have found a few so Especially for some people, this will be quite interesting. I haven't really made these myself. Um, I don't generally make other people's formulas, but if you're really confused and looking for somewhere to start, then it could definitely be a good thing to kind of look at. So for example, we've got Jerome Sparler's website. There's this dude here who's given away loads of formulas, which is really nice of the guy. Um, but you can go to his website and go to formulas. And there are some, if it loads, there are some formulas and yeah so we've got the woven wood perfume that sounds quite cool uh, i don't know what that is that is tropical fruit and driftwood on the beach uh, props to that yeah that this so so i don't know if, if this stuff is good or not but it, it sounds really cool and it looks like a lot of care has been put into it it looks like the guys put a lot of thought and effort so i'm assuming they must be must be decent um and he's put the formula and he's got so effectively what's going on here is you've got your ingredients how much you pre-dilute your ingredient by, and then the weight of those pre-diluted ingredients you would add to get the formula. So anyway, if you're interested in uh, formulas, I would recommend this website. There's also perfumersapprentice.com. There is a section about accords on their website. So if you're interested in any of these things on this list, for example, amber, carnation, cologne, gardenia, etc., then go onto their website and you can click on these and it will open up as a PDF, and this is their interpretation. So for example, if you wanna make an amber cord and you've got these ingredients, then you could definitely go and try this, and maybe that will be a good amber cord for you. And um, finally, we have Dream Air formulas. Um, there is a company called Dream Air by a perfumer called Christophe Lodemiel, and he has got a few formulas on his website as well. Um, so. If you click on those, you will get the formula and you can have a look at it. You could try to make those if you want. Um, there's this one green candle thing, green formula. I don't know what this is, but the website looks awesome for this. You, if you go and look at it, you've got like you click on this picture and then this formula comes out and it's got this really nice interactive graphic with uh, the different ingredients and how much to put them in. So in theory, you could just make this as well if you wanted to see what it smells like. Triple aisles, really nice. Um, some of these things I don't have, uh, but it sound, this looks really good because I really like green smells, but that's getting off the point. Basically, it's another source of formula. So if you want to look at it, uh, feel free to have a look at that. Anyway, so moving on, another thing if you're just starting out is the Perfumer's Apprentice. I have a download for Jean Carl's um, text, which he wrote. Yeah, so basically there was a highly regarded perfumer called Jean Carl's back in the 1900s. And he wrote this, um, this kind of text essentially, which is called A Method of Creation of Perfumery. It's an excellent resource if you're looking for some really good advice on how to start in perfumery and how to learn perfumery the right way. Um, yeah, so it was written in 1961. It is a classic, but it's really, really well worth it. And especially the fact you can get this for free online. This is like one of the few examples online where you get really, really good information and you can just get it for free. So I'd recommend going and downloading that and reading it. Uh, it's really good. Next, we have YouTube channels. So obviously you're watching this video on my YouTube channel, so you know about that. But there are some other YouTube channels which I think are really good. One is Luca Turin, who is a biophysicist and he spent his whole career studying the science of olfaction and how we smell. Um, this is really interesting. He has now released in the last few months a full lecture course on the history of scent and also some aroma chemicals um, as basically an introduction to perfumery. And this is really, really good. I would recommend this. If you haven't seen this, um, go to his channel and definitely give that a watch. It's it's really good if you're interested in becoming a good perfumer. 
Um, other channels, I would also recommend BK Sense. Um, if you go here, you will find a load of really nice videos about some beginner, some advanced topics um, in perfumery. You've got a really nice mixture, some things, what some materials smell like, some good advice on how to get started and doing formulas. So I would definitely check out this channel as well. Really good. Another one is BBC have put a perfume documentary on YouTube. So the BBC made this documentary a while back and it's been uploaded to YouTube. Um, this is a playlist on my channel, so I'll put a link in the description. I'll put a link for every, every website here. Um, but you can go on this and it's effectively a three hour documentary. Um, it's been really well produced. Uh, it's a bit outdated now, but it's effectively an overview of the perfume industry and how it works. So again, if you're wanting to be a perfumer, this is a really good resource. I would recommend you definitely watch this as well. And finally, um, Fragrance View is another good channel. Um, now, most of the videos on this channel are actually perfume reviews. So if you're interested in making perfume, this isn't gonna be super relevant, though maybe you like those anyway, which is fine. Um, but he's got some really nice videos, especially for beginners about making perfume. So for example, this one here, how to make perfume start to finish, and he's got a few other ones as well. Um, if you are just starting out, this guy is amazing at explaining things in a really nice, uh, a really beginner friendly way and a way that's going to make you feel super kind of comfortable, especially if, if perfumery is something that's daunting to you um, and it sounds like there's just so much stuff to learn, then I would recommend watching these videos because it really kind of allows you to feel like I can do this, you know, I can, I can do this myself. So yeah, I recommend this guy. Uh, seems like a super nice guy as well. Okay, anyway, next up we have, okay, a couple of websites on regulation. These are only important if you're already gonna sell your perfumes or thinking about doing it as a business, um, but I'm gonna show you them anyway, just in case they interest you. So the first one is IFRA, the standards library. So the IFRA is uh, the International Fragrance Association, and this is effectively a self-governing body um, within the fragrance industry, which is all about um, keeping perfumes safe and making sure that there is no massive kind of issues um, with perfumes being unsafe. Now the way this is done is mostly through imposing kind of limits on how much you should use in your perfumes. Um, you don't have to follow these limits if you don't want to, it's not legal, but it's generally accepted as a best practice within the industry. So the way you would use this is you go to the standards library, you take an ingredient you're interested in, say you're interested in um, hexile, I'm just gonna think of something random, Let's search what comes up. Hexile salicylate, let's go on that. And what's gonna happen is you press download item, a new page will open, and it's a document with info about this material. So you've got the identifiers, and most importantly, you've got the restriction limits in the final product. So when people say, I'm conforming to IFRA guidelines, that means you, refer, uh, you conform to the restrictions that are given here and any other uh, restrictions which are stated in this document. Now, we've got all these different categories. These are the different types of uh, fragrance products. For us, it's mostly category four we care about because we're making normal perfumes. Um, and category four is perfumes for unshaved skin, which is a normal perfume. If you're making eau de toilettes or aftershaves, which are meant to be used when you're shaved, so this is when the skin is a lot more vulnerable. So any chemicals will have a higher chance of going through the skin. That's category three. So what you can see here is the limits for category three are a bit lower. It's a bit more tightly restricted. This is just to make sure that it's even more safe for if you're gonna be using an aftershave. Though the idea of the limits on the first place in category four is already that it's safe within this limit. Um, you've got other categories, for example, I think 11 is for candles and You've got things like lip balms or um, cleaning products maybe, mouthwash, I don't really know the other categories, but so whatever you're trying to perfume, even if it's not actual perfume, this document's gonna help. But what you can see that you need to know is if you wanna conform to your perfume, just go to category four and you see this limit of 6.5%. All that means is make sure that hexyl salicylate in your final formula is under 6.5%. And if so, then you're fine, you're conforming to IFRA standards. So make sure you go over all of your ingredients if you wanna sell your perfume or 
um, you want to release it as a proper business venture, make sure that all of them fall within the IFRA limits. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, the other website about this is also the European Cosmetics Law. Um, I would really not recommend you read this unless you are very serious about doing a perfumery business. But if you are, basically, if you want to sell your perfumes legally in Europe, this website or this page will show you the exact laws that you really need to follow to make your perfume legal. So it's literally the law is just written here and you read this document's actually only 34 pages or something. I think when I printed it, it's not too bad. Um, it is obviously really boring, but if you're, if you're serious about it, then I think it's worth doing and it will basically give you all of the things that you need to do. So, um, it basically tells you what labeling requirements you need to conform to, what responsibilities you have before you put the perfume on the market, things like that. Um, so I think that's a good one to know. After that, we have inspiration. Um, back to Fragrantica, one page that I didn't mention before. So the thing here is you can search by notes. So the good thing about this page is it's really good for inspiration. Um, it's got basically all the notes you could ever think of listed for example, say you're on citrus, um, you've got your normal lemon, bergamot, uh, grapefruits, um, lime and orange. I think that's the, the usual citrus you might have. But say you want something that's citrus, but it's a bit different. Well, maybe you want to go and look at yuzu, for example, or pomelo. So this is a good way of having ideas in that kind of sense. Um, they really have just about everything you can imagine here. Um, some of them honestly are a little bit ambitious. Um, I don't know how realistic some of them are. For example, brown scotch tape, uh, things like bricks. Um, I mean, even if you're the best perfumer in the world, you're going to have trouble making things smell like this. Um, so, you know, but it's, uh, it's, I think it's a good reference because even if you're sitting at home with your first 20 ingredients or whatever, it's still nice to dream, you know, maybe one day I can make some asphalt in my perfume, who knows. Um, and if you actually go and click on one of these things, so say you've got Cephalus um, and you click on it, you can actually see some perfumes that it's listed as a note in. So again, if you're interested in the notes particularly, uh, this is interesting to find perfumes that have that particular note. Next, we have some things on the industry. So there is this website called Perfumer Flavorist Magazine, which I'm a big fan of. Um, if you're interested in the industry, that is, not so much if you're just doing hobby perfumery, but if you're kind of wanting to know um, the major companies and players in the industry and what's going on with them, this is a good website to check. So for example, Alba Vie is a manufacturer of ingredients, and this is just kind of a corporate update on some stuff that's been happening. That said, um, there is some other things this website's good for. For example, um, it's a bit like base notes. Searching can give you some help sometimes with a chord. If you go on Rose, for example, you search that. So this website, Fer Perfumer and Flavorist, is a magazine which has an online site. And they've been going for a long time. So they have had articles such as this one back in uh, 1980, I think, which you can still find on the website. And this, for example, is really aimed at helping you make a rose accord and perfumery. So sometimes if you're searching for chords, I would recommend trying Perfumer Flavorist. Um, this is great because it gives you a breakdown, for example, on a scientific analysis of what's inside rose. So you can see certain ingredients here like citronellol and geraniol. Um, and what else? We've got geraniol acetate, other things. And if you go down here, there's some advice. So start with a base of 70% phenyl ethyl alcohol, 10% citronellol, 6% geranial, 3% neril. There you go, that is an accord right there. Uh, well, it's the starting point of your accord. Literally just get these four ingredients, mix them together like he says, and then you can use the rest of the info in this article to go and keep developing that rose accord. This is probably something I'll do at some point. So if I, if I do this, I will try to make a video on it, um, but I don't have time at the moment, unfortunately. Um, so that's that. Um, there's also technical stuff. If you're very interested in the science of perfumery, again, if you're just if you care about the R form, um, you know I would just leave this out. Um, but it can be interesting. So Flavor and Fragrance Journal. This is like a a research scientific journal which has stuff to do with um, the science about smell and the chemistry of the ingredients. 
So for example, here you've got uh, dill essential oil, uh, constituents, does it work as a biocide? I don't know what that means, but you know, the, the, the point is there's uh, stuff here you can find out about essential oils and things like that. Um, another one is nature has got some research on olfaction. If you're interested in the actual science of how we smell things and how olfaction works, um, this is probably going to be quite heavy as well. So only if you've got a scientific background, would I recommend this, but it's going to be like, you know, research groups around the world, what's the latest breakthroughs they've made or conclusions about how we smell things. Uh, moving on to more normal stuff. Final thing really is suppliers. I quickly just wanted to give you guys a list of supplier websites that I know about. So uh, no matter what country you're in, hopefully you can find something somewhere. So if you're in the UK, um, we've got Plush Folly. I haven't ordered from them, but I've heard good things. So if you go here, you've got Shop Aroma Chemicals and you've got a load of ingredients you can buy. So that's good. Same thing really for Pell Wall. Um, I did a video on unboxing some ingredients from Pell Wall the other day. Um, I'll put a link to that video in the description if you're interested, go check that out. But basically these guys, are, actually, yeah, these guys are really good. I would recommend them. Um, you can get loads of ingredients for perfumery. Their website is pretty slow, I'm not gonna lie, but all the ingredients they have are very good. So you can go and look at those. If you're in the Netherlands, they're really anywhere in the EU because especially when you're in Europe, it's quite easy to order from one country, even if you're in a different one. Um, but Hexabus, you can see the site's quite simple, but if you go to the shop, you can buy all of the usual fragrance ingredients, which is great. So I think that's a good one to check out. Um, another one is Germany, Lisa Carbon. I haven't um, actually bought anything from most of these, by the way, so I wouldn't take them all as recommendations, but I'm just kind of giving you an idea of where you can go. Um, she's got some unusual ingredients here as well which is good. Um, so if you're interested in some of the ingredients, check out this one if you're in Europe. Then the next one is Perfumeries. I don't really know how you're meant to say it, but effectively this one is a Polish website. So um, yeah, but again, it just seems like the other ones, you can buy a lot of ingredients. If you're in Poland, this is probably a good supplier. I don't know. Um, and finally, for Europe, we have Italy has got some Hermitage oils, which I have used before. Um, now, the, the quality of these people are generally very good, so I can recommend buying from them. The only issue with them is that their documentation is very bad. So if you're looking to get a good quality ingredient, they're a great supplier. If you care about all of the chemistry, like papers that you might want if you're doing a business or you're selling your perfumes legally, then yeah, it's going to be more tricky. Um, but I would really recommend them as a supplier, especially if you're just making perfumes for yourself. Um, they're really, really nice. Next, we have the USA. Um, I'm just going to put a list of the ones I've heard good things about. So there's Perfumers Apprentice, which is that site we were on before. They are mainly an ingredient stockist. So if you go to Shop Fragrance Ingredients, you can see that they have a massive list of ingredients you can buy. So if you're in the US, um, definitely check out Perfumers Apprentice. Another one is creatingperfume.com. Um, so they have a shop. You can go and buy some aroma chemicals, things like that. Um, so they're selling, again, all the usual things you would expect. And another thing is Perfumery Supply House, which is, I think, again, US-based. So they have all of these ingredients you can check out and go and buy. Um, a cool thing about the websites always is the different websites generally have different ingredients in stock. For example, this one has glycolieral, which I've never heard of before. So the more websites you go to, um, the more different variety effectively you can find, which is nice. Um, and finally, another one I've heard lots of good things about is Eden Botanicals, which are a naturals supplier. and. By looking at their websites, it looks like they have a massive listing of essential oils. This is just A to B, which takes up more than a whole screen on my screen. So again, it sounds like these people, from what I've heard, are a great supplier to buy from. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm gonna put a link to all of these websites in the description. Um, I hope you found these useful. I hope these help you out. 
If you know about other websites, also please put those in the description because it will probably help me out and also anyone else who's reading in the comments, um, basically find out which kind of websites there are. Uh, one final thing is a quick update on my own website, which is my web store. Um, if you're in the market for some scent strips or pipettes, I am now selling them on my web store. So if you're looking for those, definitely go check it out. Um, but apart from that, that's it. So see you next time and thanks for watching. Bye.